talked to each other about what was going on, on under hypnosis. And even though they were hypnotized separately by Dr. Simon, they were relating their own separate experience. And the three beings on each side took them from the vehicle. Both of them at that point were incapacitated. Both of them were not fully conscious of what was going on. And they were taken on board the vehicle as they were uh, being taken up a ramp. Betty woke up. She fought. She didn't want to go on board that craft. And that is probably, she thought, where she tore her dress, the hem of her dress and the lining of her dress, because she gave one a good kick to try to break away, to try to flee back to the car. You do not mess with Betty Hill. Let's take a musical break and come back to the interview after that. You're listening to The Unified Field on CKDU. Listening to the Unified Field. Hey, hey, Halifax and beyond. This is Miss Jordan, and you're listening to the Unified Field with Mr. Justin Brown on CKDU. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. We're back. Thanks, Victoria and Miss Jordan, and Band of Horses, of course, with Funeral uh, of the Records. 
Um, everything all the time, of course. And you're tuned into CKDU 88.1 FM for Atlantic Canada's only paranormal radio broadcast. And for all you listeners that are just tuning in, we're listening to the Kathleen Martin interview. I had her over via telephone uh, with the CKDU studios back in um, mid-August, early, probably the second, first or second week of August. And uh, we're playing the interview right here tonight. Stay tuned after that. We've got a... Um, a listener email about his cabin entity story that he's going to share with all of us and the world when it goes to YouTube in a, in a few weeks' time. As well, we've got Calendar of the Paranormal with the lovely Sylvia Richards and uh, a whole lot more exopolitical pulse stories of the Japanese Prime Minister's wife being abducted by aliens and uh, way more than that. Stay tuned. Let's get back to the Kathleen Martin interview. I'm Mr. Justin Brown, and this is UFR. one a good kick to try to break away to try to flee back to the car i did not know that he was really incapacitated taken on board the craft they were taken to separate rooms where they were given physical examinations by these non-human entities who looked somewhat similar to the uh, little grays that are described today there were two groups there there was a taller group and then there was the short uh, three-and-a-half to four-foot-tall group who uh, had very large heads uh, in comparison to their bodies. The taller group were four-and-a-half to five feet tall. So they're still shorter than most humans. They uh, had no hair. They had the large wraparound eyes. They had only a slit for a mouth, only uh, two nostrils, but without, a, uh, without much of a nose no ears. They uh, communicated telepathically with Betty and Barney, they said. uh, They had very thin, spindly legs and arms and barrel-type torsos or chests. So they were very round in that section of their bodies. They were very interested in the difference between Betty's and Barney's skeletons and their own. So the skeletal structure was of great interest to them as were um, Betty's and Barney's skin in comparison to their skin, uh, their, their eyes, their mouths. Uh, they did not have teeth. Yeah. And Barney only saw a membrane inside of their mouths that fluttered when they communicated with each other in what was kind of like a, a low droning humming sound. But their communication with Betty and Barney seemed to be telepathic. Incredible. That really is incredible. Uh, there's an interesting... You know what? That ties back into what we were saying about their inexperience with the phenomenon. So there's inexperience on both sides here, it would seem. This particular group seems... I hate to speak for the entire group of whoever these entities are, mm-hmm. because, I mean, they, they could be, you know, on their own journey as individuals learning about the processes of, yeah. of who we are. Yeah, so a lot of uh, investigators, Carl Flock was one, and Stan Friedman was another one, who, who compared them to a group of graduate students who right. were just come, coming by to, to pick up a couple of human specimens and, prob- and really bungled the job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, because it does seem sloppy, and their inexperience with the human anatomy seems to suggest that those individuals didn't seem to be as experienced as the later stories. Yes, yes, that's correct. So that makes me wonder, you know, is this really a relatively new phenomenon? Or is it, I mean, the visitation of non-human entities, like I said before, seems to have been taking place since time immemorial. But maybe this particular species had just arrived. That That is possible, but the, the descriptions of these species seems to be very similar to the descriptions from the Roswell crash. Yes. So I do believe they, they might have been around before that, but maybe not for that long. Or perhaps they had been here a century before and were returning, and not in great numbers at first. Right, right. Uh, you know, so it does seem that they were inexperienced. Uh, you know, sort of like uh, we 
might, uh, for example, look at a certain species of, of animal, and maybe we looked at them 100 years ago, and, and now we're back to, to follow that genetic line to see what has happened to them. Yeah, I mean, there are uh, descriptions and drawings of entities very similar to the descriptions give by, gave by the hills, uh, you know, on caves and, and, and uh, uh, all over the world um, from indigenous cultures. So it would seem to suggest that they're not new to the earth, but maybe they were. The interest may have peaked around this particular time because of the advancement of our species. Um, but like you said, who knows? They could have been the crew graduate studies students, yeah. rather, right? You know, and I think that the atomic bomb probably signaled yeah. them that they needed to be concerned about us. Yes. Yes, indeed. Now, I understand that as the hypnosis sessions progressed, there were some very fine details that came to light about the entities themselves, the way... I know you gave a description, but... Uh, uh, I know that uh, there were procedures that had taken place on the hills that they go into detail about the hills in their in their hypnosis sessions. Did they make any mention about the texture of their skin? Uh, uh, yes, I have actually have a chapter uh, in Captured, the Betty and Barney Hill UFO experience, that I devote entirely to what I call the occupants, these non-human entities. And Betty had been writing to... Uh, scientists, this was after Bonnie's death in 1969, um, about these beings to try, attempt to determine the type of environment that they had come from. Right. So she gave very detailed descriptions of their skin, yeah. of their hands, of their bodies. Uh, the texture of their skin was different from our own. Uh, it appeared to be bumpier than our own, uh, and it was cold to the touch. That was something that she noticed. Uh, so um, I actually, in this book, in the chapter I referred to, gave a great deal of detailed information about the entities and the possible environment that they came from. I have to admit that um, normally I, ha I thought I had pretty much every... Uh, book on the subject, but I have to admit that I don't have a copy of C Captured, regretfully. I need to get my hands on one of those, because I love this story, and uh, this book, did this, well, this was released in 2007, right, Captured? Uh, yes, it was. Okay, so I do need to get that and read into it, because the story is fascinating. The amount of detail that, have, that has come out of the Hills' experience seems to be unparalleled on a lot of levels. Um, there was actually a funny, a little comic relief there in, in the abduction, if there can be one in a situation like this, where the entities actually tried to pull out Betty's teeth. Can you explain what happened there? <laughs> yes. Uh, they had been talking to, uh, the leader had been talking to Betty about life on Earth and what we eat and that sort of thing, when um, three entities suddenly entered the room that she was in there was a, a big uproar, she thought, and and they had Barney's dentures in right. their hands. Right. And they went to her and started tugging on her teeth. They had discovered that his were removable, that, but hers were not. And so the leader started to question Betty about this. And she said uh, that as people aged, they sometimes had to have their teeth extracted or sometimes people would have accidents. Barney had lost his teeth in an accident. And so there was a, a big uproar and an explanation about this. Now, this was also part of Betty's dream material. Right. So I wanted to check this uh, to compare her statements during hypnosis to his. And during hypnosis, her statement was exactly the same as that in her dream. What Barney stated was only that he could feel what felt like fingers entering his mouth. <laughs> so he didn't say that his teeth were extracted. We don't know for sure. I don't have scientific evidence yeah. that this was, in fact, a real event and not just part of her dream material. 
Mm-hmm. But we do know that Barney didn't know about that, as far as I can tell. And he did say he felt fingers entering his mouth. 